So, just hit just over 10,000 miles this weekend, driving up to Lake Superior. Thought I'd make an update video, but do it a little bit different. So, for 10,000 miles, I was going to do 10 likes and 10 dislikes for the Ford Transit on the Thor Sanctuary. So, we'll just start with likes and sitting up front. I would go drivability. There's no particular order to this, but drivability, everything up here is easily within reach. You can address it touch anything as a driver. The only problem might be this cup holder up here might be a reach for a shorter person. But anybody who can drive a v any kind of car can drive this van comfortably. Second thing, oh, with drivability, let me show you with the backup cameras. I mean, these backup cameras are excellent. They give you a 360 view over here and then a very high mounted camera gives you a wide view of what's behind you. That just adds to drivability. So the second thing that I would mention, um, infotainment screen, second like. You can have your map and your directions on one side. Your music is just so large, it's easy to look at and see what's going on. You don't have like some little five inch screen up there, you know. Going into the third like, I would say it's all wheel drive system. So you can kind of control it up here, but it is a smart all wheel drive so you can just have it, you can have it in normal mode and it's going to switch into all-wheel drive as you want. When you're driving in a straight line, it'll be two-wheel drive to save on fuel, so that's just a nice thing to have. So, for the fourth like, stepping outside the van would have to be it's gas. It's not diesel. You can find gas, you know, if you have a gas station, more than likely they'll have gas. Diesel, sometimes you might have to look a little bit for it. Moving on to the fifth one would be size. So this van's only 19 feet 8 inches long. If it's in a normal car place, normal car spot, you can take it in any national park. You can pretty much take it anywhere a car can go, except for maybe a parking garage. Just for fun, I measured how long my four-door car was. 16 feet long. So this van is only three feet longer than my car. Pretty crazy. So for the sixth one coming up here, you can see this van is turned on, it has power, and you hear no noise. So having lithium-ion batteries for the van, you can pretty much camp anywhere. You can be running in the AC, and you can hear the AC on the outside, but you don't hear a generator trying to give you electricity. For number seven, stepping into the back, ceiling height. So six feet, seven inches tall in the back, so if you're a tall person... Like me, I'm 6'4", I can stand up straight, no issues back here. Moving into, what are we up to now, 8? So the 8 is going to be just the layout. So this, this layout just works for us. You know, you have the two seats up front, nothing back here, and then a big bench seat in the back. We don't have to ride in the back, so it's probably not the most comfortable places to ride, but that bench seat does turn into a bed. And with the size of this van, when that's all laid out, that bed is about a king size bed. Going into number nine, these cabinets. They just look so nice. Um, you know, 10,000 miles in and they're solid. There's been no problems with them. They look good. So definitely, definitely like those. Bottom cabinets, maybe not so much, but not enough to make them a dislike yet. And then lastly, um, the number 10 thing that we like about this van is that it has everything you need. So, microwave, fridge, toilet, running water. Like, you are a self-contained unit. You can go anywhere, you can stop anywhere, and then you can basically, like, camp out and be comfortable. Ah, so that was the 10 likes about the van. Now I'll move on to the 10 dislikes. So we'll just start in the back with the dislikes, because we're already back here. Dislike number one. How big the bathroom is. So, dedicated bathroom space, and it has only been used one time in 10,000 miles. But it takes up so much space in the back of the van. Uh, if you watch home builders, people that build their own, they'll usually tuck these away in a storage, like under a seat, and they'll use like a composting toilet. I think that is the way to go, because it does not need this much dedicated space just for a toilet. And you do not need Oh, it's, you can't see it because of that. You do not need a sink in your bathroom 
that's three feet away from your sink in the <laughs> kitchen area. Next thing, this back seat. When you fold that down, you have, let me go back here. When it's folded out into a bed, this back part's pretty firmly padded. So that's gonna be like a high point. This is gonna become like a low point. So kind of in your middle area, you're gonna be like sinking. And then this seat's gonna be a high point. So it's just like, it's like kind of lumpy. Um, we kind of use uh, like a, a memory foam topper to kind of smooth it out, but you still kind of notice it. Next one, as we move forward, this cheap looking cooktop. So kind of wish they would have just did like an induction cooktop that went in a drawer and just left this as solid counter space. That would have been nice. So what are we up to? Three, fourth one these bug screens and you see this piece in here because it falls off all the time these bug screens it's just like a roll-up screen right here for when you slide these windows I see why they do it the way they do it but these things fall off all the time when you shut your doors like there's not really like a whole lot holding them on and just kind of a pain And then moving on, I think we're up to number five. Fifth dislike. This. This finishing stuff. So maybe not fair now. I just got a recall in the mail about this. But um, rather than paint the wood, it has like a kind of like a vinyl sticker sticking on it. So the recall that I just got did mention that for whatever whatever reason, either they change manufacturers or they just change their glue. But the glue for some of these is not sticking anymore. So this kind of, I mean, there's not really like a whole lot holding that on no more. I don't know why they do it as a sticker instead of just paint. I did get a color match paint, so you can see it's like kind of coming off everywhere. Um, so I'll either paint it myself or I'll take it in for like a winter, a winter check over service and have them just go ahead and replace all this stuff. But I don't want to be without a van for so long. So that's why I just kind of been holding off on it. Oh, moving up to the front seats. What was that? Oh, that's Velcro. Moving up to these front seats. They're number six on the list. They are so basic. I don't even know if I ever had a car with basic seats. Any more basic than these. But basically, they go front and back. They recline. Don't have lumbar support, even. I mean, they are... What is that? Maybe four adjustments. Forward, back, up, and down. That's it. Pretty basic. Also, another side note that's kind of frustrating, kind of goes with the seat. This seat can swivel, but if you have that seat swiveled and you have to use your van to maybe recharge your battery, your van is going to alarm like crazy because that seat is not in the right forward-facing position. So that's a little bit of a pain in the butt. So moving back up to the front seats, um, number seven for transit thing, uh, the center console. You are so reliant on this touch screen to do nearly every function. You'll notice there's a huge lack of buttons. You can't change your AC. You can't do max defrost at least. You can't change your AC. You can't do hardly anything in this car without that screen turned on. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Sometimes having like physical buttons for things to be able to do it quickly is kind of nice. Moving on to number eight, lack of power in the front. So you got those two. One USB that does data, one 12 volt. And then up in this cubby, you have a 12 volt and a USB. And I think that's a USB-C. Yeah, that's a USB-C for that little one. That's it, this whole van, there's no, um, there's no AC outlet up here. Just those two points are your only power sources up here in the front. For number nines back here at the back, um, for one, this whole setup is kind of a mess. Um, doesn't look very nice. I probably will take this apart and actually try and clean it up a little bit and change it. This car go by. So the number nine is this is only a 400 amp hour system. So it is a like that it's a battery system, but that the one that we're looking at right here, that's the 400 amp hour battery. I think if they would have just organized this back a little bit better, they probably could have put 
two 400 amp hour batteries side by side, made it 800 amp hours. That would have made this van a lot more usable for people, especially in hot climates. You can't, you won't be, you won't be able to run your AC all night long with 400 amp hours. It will go, it'll get you like three to four hours solid, maybe five, but then after that, you're gonna be out of luck. So that's number nine. And the number 10 dislike, reflector headlights. I think maybe my first vehicle had reflector headlights, but I haven't had reflector headlights on a vehicle in like 20 years. At least make a projection or something, you know. Uh, you can see I did kind of upgrade those bulbs. That's an LED bulb now. I'll post links to videos of stuff that I upgraded. And then that's just, I upgrade the, the high beam also to a brighter bulb. All right, so that's the 10 likes and 10 dislikes for 10,000 miles for this Ford Transit. Thor Sanctuary van. Um, coming up, say October, will be one year of ownership. So I'll post like a updated MPG. I can't remember if this has it on it. I think it might, but so far this summer, MPG is much improved over the winter. It's around 16 on average, 16 to 18. Um, if you find a nice like straight highway that's like 55, you'll probably get about 20 miles to the gallon. That was the case going to Lake Superior this last weekend. So like and subscribe for more. Um, keep on posting videos as I do upgrades and stuff. Thanks for watching.